Hey friends, today we are hanging out at the Magic Kingdom and I wanted to come out and see if we could still have a magical day without even looking at the Genie app or using the Genie Plus service. We're going to ride some rides, eat some food, and just enjoy a beautiful evening at the Magic Kingdom. Anywho's, let's go do this. It is a very busy day here at the Magic Kingdom. It's a Friday and there was no available park reservations. I actually had to get a park reservation at Hollywood Studios and then hop over here at two o'clock just so I can come out and make this video. The Genie app and Genie Plus service is completely optional as of right now. You can just come to the park and pretend like it does not exist. In fact, there's thousands of people that are vacationing here to Walt Disney World that have never even heard of the Genie app. I remember when Fast Passes were a thing, I would run into people in the parks and they didn't even know Fast Passes existed. So today we're just gonna go about the day like we would any other day, just not use Genie at all. We're gonna start our day right here in Adventureland and just make a big circle around the park checking out the wait times, riding rides, getting snacks, and just enjoying the day. If you guys wanna see what a day is like in the parks using the Genie app or the Genie Plus services, I actually made a video of the opening day over at Animal Kingdom. Overall, I don't think it's worth it, especially the Genie Plus services, the $15 a day. And it's not affordable for families. Like, it is very costly. The only thing I do like is the fact that you could make a one-time purchase for Flight of Passage, Seven Doors Mine Train, and Rise of the Resistance, because even when we had Fast Passes, you could never get a Fast Pass for those in the beginning but overall I don't think I'm actually ever gonna use it I don't think I need to use it so today we're gonna test that theory out our first stop is gonna be here for Pirates of the Caribbean one of my all-time favorite attractions the wait time for standby is 20 minutes so like I said we can just actually go in and wait 20 minutes and actually I think I will because that is a not not a bad wait time at all and as much as I dislike the Genie app and the Genie Plus services, this place is still going to be very special to me. So I'm going to make the best out of every single situation that I am in and just try to enjoy life as much as I can. But give me Pirates of the Caribbean for a 20 minute wait all day long and I would be happy. We got in the line at 417 and it is now 422 and we just passed the fast or the lightning lane separation point. So we saved ourselves five minutes by waiting in the standby. Here comes our boat. Oh, nope. There goes our boat. I think we'll be catching the next one. There's our boat. Oh yeah. <laughs> wasn't a bad start to the day. We were in the queue at 417 and we got to the lightning lane uh, like touch points at 422. So it was a five minute difference from standby to lightning lane. And then after that, everybody had to wait the same amount of time, but we were right on in under 20 minutes. And now we're gonna keep moving along and kind of head on over to Frontierland. As we make our way over to Frontierland, the Golden Oak Outpost is open, and I am like never get to see this open, actually. I'm never back here when it's open. They actually have a special 50th anniversary spicy chicken sandwich with a bacon skewer through it, and I think that is kind of awesome. And since I'm never back here when this is open, I think we're going to get it and try it. I mean, I love actually coming about and finding new 50th anniversary desserts or food items that I didn't even know about. Like, I didn't know this existed. Take a look at that Pecos Bill Widowmaker Sandwich. It's 
spicy fried chicken sandwich with maple mustard slaw and topped with the bacon skewer. They also have Walt's chili cheese fries. This is really awesome. I'm happy to try this. And maybe I'll get myself either a lemonade or a bottle of water. Something I gotta drink it. Yeah, I have to have a drink with a spicy fried chicken sandwich. We don't know how spicy it could be. I just asked and they're actually closing at five o'clock, which is in just a couple minutes. So I was just here in time enough to get my spicy chicken sandwich. Here it is, take a look at that. And I like how it has a little horseshoe on top with the bacon skewer. That looks really good and it's got a nice little coleslaw on there. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I should take the bacon skewer off. Like, do you wanna eat this separate than this? You know what I mean? All right, we're gonna try the sandwich first on its own. So we're gonna dive right on in here. I'm gonna take the chicken part right here. It is definitely a little bit spicy, so I wouldn't recommend it if you don't like spicy food. Like sometimes when people say things are spicy, I'm like, is it really spicy? But this has a little bit of a kick to it. The bacon horseshoe, I think, is my favorite thing out of all of it, though. I just kind of like the way it looks. I might actually want to keep this. So we're going to bite into it. We're going to try it. Like, kind of like uh, the bacon skewer that they have over in Frontierland. Hey. I guess now I'll just actually put the bacon on the sandwich. I'll keep the skewer though. I'll keep this half of the horseshoe skewer. Cherish that forever. That sandwich was okay. It was kind of like a uh, Burger King like dollar chicken sandwich. The coolest thing though was probably that horseshoe bacon skewer. And also it was really awesome that you could just walk up and order that. You didn't have to actually use my Disney Experience app. And I wish things could actually start being like that because I do miss actually going into places and just ordering food, you know? I don't like the mobile ordering that much at all. Now we've made it over to Frontierland. I want to check on some of the wait times. The day before Genie Plus actually started, I rode Big Thunder Mountain and I did it in the standby line. And I believe it started like right there and it was 40 minutes long. And I ended up waiting about 30 minutes. And uh, the line actually seems a lot shorter now. It's shorter, like the line itself isn't as long, but it's still the same wait time. It's 40 minutes for Big Thunder Mountain and then 45 minutes for Splash Mountain. And since we just did Big Thunder Mountain just a couple days ago, I think we will go ride Splash Mountain. 45 minute wait, that's not too bad either. Usually, I've seen this actually be up in the high 60s and 70s, especially on a day like today. It's actually really nice out. I'm happy that the majority of the queue for Splash Mountain is outside, so you don't have to actually wear a mask as you're waiting. And uh, I love being back here, it's always so pretty. I also like seeing all the different wanted pictures, like for Br'er Bear right here. <laughs> cohort to Br'er Fox. Cohort. I want to be someone's cohort. So that only took about 30 minutes and that's not too bad. I like how everything has been under the actual posted standby wait time. Well, the two attractions that we did so far and now I need some sanitizer. Thank you. I like sitting by myself because I can sit exactly like right in the middle and that gives me less chance to get wet on the sides. Wow, it is so beautiful out today. A good day to hit up the briar patch. Oh, I'm glad those cannons aren't back. They get me every time. Yeah. 
The hat saves the day again. Bye, <laughs> <Hi>, friends. <laughs> It's always nice when you ride Splash Mountain when you don't get soaking wet. And I like that my camera was saved by the fedora. I always do that. As soon as we're about to hit the splash, I just pull the camera and duck it right into my hat. And it's kind of like a shield. And it always works. It always protects the camera. I wanted to come over and check out the wait time when we got off Splash Mountain for Big Thunder Mountain. And it's 35 minutes, so it went down a little bit. And the queue is actually just starting right here. Like I said, I've been actually waiting in line all the way back to the uh, boardwalk area there. Of course, every day is going to be different here with the wait times. It all depends on the crowds. Like today is a very busy day and there was no reservations, but it's not like a holiday weekend and the holiday weekend is going to be super busy. And that's going to be like the true test to see how much the Genie Plus or the Lightning Lane affects the standby line wait times. You know what I mean? Like you have to see it on a very, very, very busy day and that would actually give you a good understanding. Just the other day, I got myself some very old Disney tickets, and it's hard to believe that Country Bear Jamboree was an e-ticket attraction. So the ticket attraction, the e-tickets, uh, Country Bear Jamboree was comparable to Space Mountain or Flight of Passage or Rise of the Resistance. Isn't that mind-blowing that this was an e-ticket attraction? A wild, wooly good time. And look, Chip and Dale are out front here, saying hi to all the guests in their cowboy outfits. You know what's really amazing? Look at how many people are actually at the shooting gallery. I don't think I've seen this many people at the shooting gallery at once in such a long time. Look at that. Free play. 35 shots for free. Just step right up, grab yourself a gun, and start shooting. It's nice to see the Frontierland shooting gallery on free play. You know, when that first started, it wasn't using lasers. It was actually using little pellets. And they would actually have to go in and touch up the paint like every single like week. And I think that's kind of crazy, isn't it? Like, can you imagine just going in there and constantly repainting everything that gets ding away? Let's make our way over here in Liberty Square and check on the Haunted Mansion now. Doesn't seem like a long line from here. Usually I can see it actually back a little bit, but I would say maybe 20 minutes. That looks like a 20 minute line for me. I take that back. It's 50 minutes and I don't even know how that is 50 minutes. I mean, 50 minutes is a long line for the Haunted Mansion. Like I would expect a 50 minute line being all the way back like underneath the Liberty Bell. Like that's how like long that line would have to be. But if that's what it is, then it's probably close to that. So we're gonna skip over that and we're gonna head over in Fantasyland, check out some of the wait times there. And also I need to get a drink. I'm a little bit thirsty. I wish I could get a coffee. I don't know if you get a coffee anywhere in Fantasyland, but maybe we'll look. Looks like It's a Small World is a 15 minute wait, which isn't too bad. Peter Pan might be another uh, thing though. Might be a little bit longer on Peter Pan because I see them actually right here. And the queue is actually pretty long on the inside, but we'll check once we get up here. It actually looks like it is a downed attraction. There's no wait time on there, so I don't know what time it actually is. I don't think it's down, I think it's just not posting. I think the standby sign is broken because the ride is still running and they're still loading people. If I was to guess, I would say that Peter Pan's probably a 45 to a 50 minute wait, and that's usual for Peter Pan. But I don't know though, because I said Haunted Mansion was 25 minutes and then it said 50, but that's the shortest 50 minute line I think I've ever saw. Well, it may not be a coffee, but they do have a 50th anniversary drink called the Wild Ride, which is a frozen wild sour cherry, blue raspberry, and apple topped with whipped cream and a black licorice wheel. And I think I want to try it. I'm not a big fan of the sour apple, so I don't know if it's going to go over well, but maybe the other things will actually like make up for it. We'll find out. I think I'm going to give it a go. Wow, take a look at this cool drink. The Wild Ride. I love it. 
I mean, like I said, I'm not a big fan of the sour apple there, but this is like one of the coolest looking drinks I think I've ever seen. And I like how the black licorice is like a steering wheel. It's perfect for Mr. Toad's. Oh my lord, and I saved my horseshoe. So I'm gonna stick my horseshoe in there and we're gonna try it. Oh yeah, that is good. Can't taste the sour apple. The other flavors really balance it out. This is really delicious and refreshing. Holy moly. I got a cooler, I'm gonna get a brain freeze. Every time I drink an Icy, it reminds me of shopping at Hills or Ames and getting some popcorn and Icy on the way out as long as I was actually behaving in the store when my mom was shopping. And it just kind of makes me feel all nostalgic. I don't even know why. Like, I just kind of relate Icy's to shopping with my mom at a department store. I almost forgot about my black licorice steering wheel and here it is and I actually love black licorice a lot of people don't love it but I do and I can't wait to try it but now it's time to move along and of course I had to come check up on probably the most popular attraction here at the Magic Kingdom and that is Seven Doors Mine Train at a 70 minute wait 70 minutes now that is 70 minutes and if you wanted to do the lightning lane for Seven Doors Mine Train you wouldn't be able to do it with the $15 Genie Plus service. You would need to purchase the separate lightning lane, the pay per ride, which would cost you $12 just for that ride alone. Me personally, wouldn't wait 70 minutes for that ride and I probably wouldn't pay $12 to ride it either. It's a good ride, but it's one of those rides that just happens so fast. Honestly, I would feel like comfortable paying maybe $8 or $7 for that ride. And uh, it's like one and done for me. Like. I do like it, it's really well themed and it's a great family ride, but it goes by so fast and you have to wait in such a long line to actually ride it. So, you guys let me know. And like I said, if you can get a fast pass for that attraction when we had fast passes, you were lucky. Like, it was a big deal to get a fast pass for Seven Doors Mine Train. Like, people would celebrate getting it. And <laughs> I don't know, let me know what you guys think. Would you pay $12 to ride without like waiting in the 70 minute standby? Or would you just wait 70 minutes? One ride I don't mind waiting for at all is Winnie the Pooh, especially because it's like a five minute wait. There's no wait at all. Literally, the queue is going right on in there, and that's pretty amazing. So we're gonna ride Winnie the Pooh, especially since there's nobody in line here. That is such a rare occasion. I think I got my own pop to myself. Oh, fancy. The East Wind traded places with the East Wind. Yeah. Oh, maybe for you. <laughs> If you ask me, he'll never reach that free. Why me? Why me? Oh dear. Hang on tightly, Rue. It's funny because we just drank the wild ride drink, and that was from Mr. Toad. And take a look at who's on the wall over here. There he is, Mr. Toad giving his ding away. Again, somebody put a Cinderella Royal Table coaster in a sanitizer spot. 
And that's really smart. It's better than seeing that really goopy goop stuff down there. So that's very nice. Maybe I should start carrying around coasters and putting them there. If I ended up paying the $15 for the uh, Genie Plus service today, it definitely wouldn't have been worth it because Winnie the Pooh, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Splash Mountain are all on that lightning lane list. So you would have been able to use the lightning lane, but what would have been the point? I mean, it was no minute wait for Winnie the Pooh, 20 minute wait for Pirates, and it said 45 minutes, but it was under 30 minutes for Splash. So like it would have been $15 for nothing just to skip those small wait times. Now it's time to continue along into Tomorrowland and we've hit up all the lands and checked out the wait times. We actually rode in uh, every land so far except for Tomorrowland. Well, we technically didn't ride anything in Liberty Square, but we did Adventureland, we did Frontierland, we did Fantasyland, and now we're making our way over to Tomorrowland. And I think we've only been here for three hours now, so that's not bad at all. It does look like there's a storm of Berwyn. The clouds got really dark here. We of course are gonna have to head on over to Space Mountain. I wanna check on the wait time for that. Now that is one of the pay per rides. That's not included. That's the other one in the park. So there's two in each park here at Magic Kingdom at Seven Doors Mine Train and Space Mountain. So we wanna see what the wait time is for that. Well, I'll be 45 minutes. Wow. That is crazy, right? 45 minutes. And the lightning lane for this is $9, I believe. So these are the lightning lane. Well, that's the lightning lane right there. And uh, 45 minutes is not too shabby for Space Mountain, I'll tell you that. So I think this is gonna be our ride for Tomorrowland. I'm also gonna see if I can take advantage of the solo traveler uh, line up here. It does have a sign that tells you to notify a cast member if you're a solo traveler, and you can actually skip a big portion of the wait in the standby line. A lot of people don't know it. Now, it's not a single rider line, but it is something that will help you get on a little bit faster. Do you guys remember when you would wait in line here for Space Mountain? They used to have like a video game that you can play right here. Even the controls were all gone, so you can't touch nothing. But I remember playing the games right here. It was really fun. And like the little controls were right in front of us. Right here are the signs. Attention Space Mountain passengers. If traveling as a party of one, please alert the flight crew. Isn't that really awesome? So you can actually maybe skip this big line here. Off. Now we are in the party of one lane and look at this Isn't this such a cool thing a lot of people don't know it I mean not a lot of people are by themselves in Disney World. I mean, there's a lot of people I mean, I'm one of them, but uh, yeah, you get to actually skip a big portion of the line Because you're just gonna be separated up here Isn't that amazing? I love pointing this out and look at that bada boom hi friend <laughs> that seriously saves you a good 10 maybe 15 minutes right there and i'm like that i'm in the back i never get to be in the back on this so i get to see the track a little bit isn't that nifty it's gonna be a rocket coming in behind me soon up oh, here it comes there's a rocket over my shoulder Oh boy, get close. Oh, oh boy. Oh my mask, it matches. Who are those people in there? Is that Mr. Johnson? We made it. And look who made it back with you. <laughs> well, that was pretty awesome. It was 20 minute wait, but we did get a couple minutes because we got to go up that single rider line lane and that helped out a lot. Saved about 10, 15 minutes. So I would probably say it was like 30, 35 and it was quoted 45. So it wasn't that long at all. And uh, yeah, so four rides in three and a half hours, one in each land. And also we stopped and got food and a drink. So like, Honestly, today's been a very productive, fun day, and we didn't need Ginny's help at all. 
as we make our way back down to Main Street USA. Buzz Lightyear is a 15 minute wait. And it looks like there's about a 10 minute wait for the people mover. Looks like we're cutting through the back side of Main Street. And some people are watching fireworks from back here. I wonder what the view is like actually. Hold on, I'm gonna stop and look real quick. Well, that's not too bad. I mean, you're straight on shot to the castle at least. But uh, 10 minutes before Disney Enchantment starts and there is nowhere to actually stand. Not even back here by the train station. Uh, the train station is actually all full. I did run over there and ask if I can go up, but they said it's all full up there today. So honestly, I think I'm just gonna head out. I mean, I can't even see the castle. Like maybe if I like snuck in right here, I might be able to get a glimpse at Good it. Good evening, Let's dreamers see. and believers. So like my standing would be right about here. I was joking around, but this is kind of pretty. I'm loving it. And I think with that, we are done here. What did you guys think about my day without Genie? I feel like we had a good day and we didn't need it. Like, you know what I mean? I just pretended like it didn't exist. I didn't look at my phone and I didn't check any of the wait times or use any of the suggestions. I literally took this as a regular day in Disney as if they didn't have Genie Plus announced. I mean, it was just like a regular day two weeks ago. You know what I mean? And I feel like nothing is different. You know what I mean? There's things that you can benefit from. And I do see like people thinking that the Genie is actually going to make the standby lines longer. But I mean, I've been coming so often that you can see lines very long. Sometimes you can see them very short. And I guess it's just about the right time and place and the right day. Like today would have been a perfect day for anyone to come and ride the rides on standby. But it would have been a sad day for anyone that came and actually spent money on Genie Plus because I feel like it might have been not worth it, especially from four o'clock to eight o'clock because almost all the rides you could have done. You know what I mean? Like all the rides that I did, I did them all under 30 minutes. The only one that was super long was Seven Doors Mine Train and that was 70 minutes. Oh, and Haunted Mansion, it said 50 minutes, but come on. It definitely did not look like it was 50 minutes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it and we will see you next time. Bye.